Farming God's way is not only about growing maize. How about soya? Pigeon peas. Ground nuts. Cow peas. Millet. <laughs> Sunflower. Testing one, two. Sorghum. Cotton. And cassava, amongst others. Farming God's Way is not exclusive to the maize crop and this brief overview will give you some insight into some of the alternative crop guidelines. A part of God's revelation through His creation is the diversity of species that exists under natural conditions. In Farming God's Way, we encourage farmers to adapt this diversity by practicing rotations, relay cropping and growing green manure cover crops. Rotational cropping in Farming God's Way, we advocate that rotations should occur every third year. Divide your lands into three equal portions and allocate the first two to the staple crop, example maize, and the third portion to the rotation crop, example beans. In year one, you grow maize on portions one and two, and your third portion is beans. In year two, it is a beans portion that comes first, and portions 2 and 3 get the maize crop. In year 3, it's maize, then beans, then maize again. By your fourth year, you're back to the original first year allocation of maize, maize and beans. Rotations have great advantages over monocropping systems, including providing for protein and vitamins in the family's diets, the fixing of nitrogen by legumes which result in cost savings and yield improvements for the following crops, breaking disease and pest cycles, improving the soil structure and the spreading of financial risk. Rotation crops are many and the variations thereof are innumerable. However, there are some general guidelines. The rotation should have a change from a monocotyledonous to a dicotyledonous species. Rotational crops should preferably include a legume, example beans, soya beans, pigeon peas, cow peas, sugar beans or groundnuts, but they can include sunflower, sweet potato and vegetables. The third rotation portion can also be subdivided further to include a variety of vegetables for a family's nutritional requirements. Select the rotational crop based on your climate, soil and objectives. Prepare and manage the land according to the selected alternative crop specifications, adjusting fertilization, spacing, seeding rates, depth of planting, thinning and top dressing, etc. If you don't practice rotations, you are going to encounter problems typical of a monocropping system, such as increased pest and disease incidence and a decline in soil fertility. For four years that I've been doing farming God's way, I've never had faith of doing crop rotation. I've done this year crop rotation of one third of my field, and by doing that, I know that I'm breaking down the disease cycle and also the balance of the income from this wide variety of crops. I know that crop rotation, like what I've done with my cotton, is a significant part of practicing farming God's way wholeheartedly. Relay cropping. Mixed cropping is a common African practice, especially when planting beans in between maize rows. However, neither of these crops reach their yield potential with the system. 
We do not encourage a mixed cropping practice for manageability and best crop performance reasons. However, we do encourage relay cropping if the climate allows for this or there is enough residual moisture towards the end of the growing season. When running a relay race, you pass the baton from one runner to the next. In the same way, relay cropping is planting the second crop when the first one is just beginning to die back. Relay crops are different to double crops, which are planted after the harvest of the first crop. Be careful not to plant the relay crop too early, as then you will cause your first crop yield to suffer drastically when the grain fill stage is happening. Relay crops can be planted in holes in the row or broadcast under the dying canopy. An example is how Dixon plants pigeon peas when the maize plant leaves start to die back, usually at the end of February or March in Malawi. In April, he harvests his maize and knocks down the stalks, and then in September, he's able to harvest the relay crop of pigeon peas. The benefits of this system include two crops in a climate with one rainy season, fixing of nitrogen because of pigeon peas being a legume, increase in God's blanket coverage, good weed control through shade effect, as well as giving the right to protect the blanket from burning by rat hunters and grazing by animals. In the past three years, his pigeon peas have averaged 750 kilograms or just under two tons per hectare, which is incredible in a dry, non-rainy winter season. Green manure cover crops. Green manure cover crops are an amazing part of God's all-sufficiency and given the right climates and management can become integrated into the cropping cycles. Green manure cover crops would be well suited to the short and long rain climates of Central and Western Africa as well as where there are extended rainy seasons. Some excellent legume varieties include Dolikos Lab Lab, Makuna Velvet Bean, Cow Peas, Alpha Alpha, Peas and Hairy Vetch. Some suitable monocots include wheat, rye and oats. Some of the species of cover crops would suit a relay cropping environment very well and can be broadcast under the canopy before the last weeding at leaf dieback stage. Green manure cover crops have been used for many years commercially to build up the percentage cover of God's blanket, fix nitrogen, improve the soil fertility and structure, control weeds, prevent erosion, provide high protein animal fodder, additional income and human food. They are just like growing compost in the field and their advantages over compost are they don't need watering and are far less labor intensive. Soya beans are relatively easy to grow and are an excellent rotational crop. They have a complete protein composition and are an excellent substitute for meat and eggs in the diet. For best results with soya beans, you should inoculate them with rhizobium bacteria and plant the seed within six hours to have the optimal nitrogen fixing effect. The row spacing for soya beans is 75 centimeters and the in furrow spacing five centimeters. For organics, use an eight centimeter furrow depth. In organics, five centimeters. Apply 350 mils of organic fertilizer per meter or eight mils of inorganic NPK. The seeding rate per hectare is about 160 kilograms. The planting depth, 1.5 centimeters. No top dressing required. The expected yield for soya beans is around two tons per hectare. Table 2. Sunflowers. The row spacing should be 75 centimeters and in row holes at 60 centimeter intervals. The hole depth is 12 centimeters for organics and 8 centimeters deep for inorganics. Place 350 mils of organic fertilizer per hole or 8 mils of inorganic NPK. Planting depth is 2 centimeters deep. 
Seed rate per hectare, six kilograms. Seeds per hole, three and then thin down to two. Top dressing of five milliliters of urea. Expected yield for sunflower around 1.5 tons per hectare. Table three, cotton. The row spacing, 75 centimeters. The in row holes, 60 centimeters. The hole depth, 12 centimeters for organics and eight centimeters deep for inorganics. Fertilization per hole, 350 mils for organics and eight milliliters of inorganic NPK. Planting depth, two centimeters deep. The seed rate per hectare, 25 kilograms. Number of seeds planting per hole, five, and thin down to just two. Top dressing, five moles of urea. Expected yield for cotton, around 1.5 tons per hectare. Sorghum. Your row spacing at 75 centimeters, in furrow spacing 10 centimeters with a furrow depth of just 8 centimeters deep. Apply 350 mils of organic fertilizer per meter. The approximate seed rate with sorghum is about 10 kilograms per hectare. Planting depth should be 2 centimeters deep with a top dressing of 8 mils of urea per meter. Expected yields around 2 tons per hectare. Table 5. Pigeon Peas The spacing between the rows is 75 centimeters and the in row holes at 120 centimeters. The hole depth is 12 centimeters for organic and 8 centimeters deep for inorganics. Apply 350 mils of organic fertilizer per hole or 8 mils of inorganic NPK. Planting depth 3 centimeters deep. The seed rate per hectare 50 kilograms. Plant just three seeds per hole and thin down to one or two. No top dressing required. Expected yield per hectare is 1.5 tons. Table six, cow peas and beans. The row spacing split your rows to 37.5 centimeters. In furrow spacing, 10 centimeters. Furrow depth is eight centimeters deep for organics and five centimeters deep for inorganics. Fertilization per meter, 350 mils of organic or 5 mils of inorganic NPK. Seed rate per hectare, 60 kilograms. Planting 2 centimeters deep. No top dressing required. Expected yield, 1.5 tons per hectare. If you are going to use cow peas as a relay crop, then you can broadcast at maize dieback and do your last weeding to allow for good seed to soil contact. Table 7. Ground Nuts Your row spacing split your rows to 37.5 cm and plant in the furrow at 4 cm intervals. Your organic furrow depth is 8 cm deep and 6 cm for inorganics. Apply 350 mL of organic fertilizer per meter or 5 mL of inorganic NPK. Seed rate per hectare is 80 kg. Planting depth, three centimeters. Top dressing, nothing required. And your expected yield around two tons per hectare. Table eight, winter wheat. Your row spacing, 15 centimeters, or you can broadcast. If planting in rows, dribble the seed in the furrows. Furrow depth at 1.5 centimeters deep, Applying 100 kilograms of seed in rows or 120 kilograms if broadcasting. The planting depth should be around 1.5 centimeters deep. Top dress broadcast fertilizer 100 kilograms of LAN or urea. The expected yield is two tons per hectare. If you're gonna plant wheat as a relay crop, then you can broadcast at maize dieback and thereafter do your last weeding to allow for good seed to soil contact. Table 9. Cassava. Your row spacing at 75 centimeters. Hole spacing at 120 centimeters. Input hole depth down slope of terran rope is 10 centimeters for organic and 5 centimeters for inorganic. Apply 350 mils 
organic fertilizer or 12 moles of inorganic NPK. Plant your cuttings on the upslope side of the tearing rope. Planting 20 centimeter long cuttings with about 5 to 8 nodes on and at 1.5 to 3.5 centimeters thick. Your planting depth, push two thirds of that cutting 13 centimeters deep. Expected yield around 20 tons per hectare. Cassava can be grown effectively on flat ground. Cut the plants that are ready for harvesting, leaving a base of 40 centimeters behind as a pull out handle. The roots must be harvested within two days after taking cuttings. Select the cuttings from disease free plants using only the mid portion of the parent plant, not the base or the top leafy sections. Store the cuttings in the shade, standing upright, preferably transplanting every day, but never store for more than five days. Plant the stakes vertically in the correct orientation so that the top side is on top. Dig the basal input holes down slope of the tearing rope and then place the stick cuttings on the upslope side of the tearing rope to ensure that no cutting burn takes place. The blanket coverage really helps to keep the soil moist and crumbly for easy uprooting at harvest time. Cassava is a very drought resistant crop and produces a high starch root which has been the survival mechanism crop for many poor communities. Table 10 Sweet Potato Plant sweet potatoes in rows of 75 cm intervals and furrows 30 cm. Your furrow depth should be 15 cm of organic or 12 cm inorganic. Applying 500 moles of compost per meter or 12 moles of inorganic NPK per meter. Plant your cuttings that are about 30 cm long flat for 20 cm and then the last leaves out of the ground. Your planting depth should be 10 cm deep, expecting a yield of about 12 tons per hectare. 30 cm long cutting should ideally be kept moist in a cool shady place for 3 days to stimulate root growth before transplanting. The cutting should come from parent plants that are about 3 months old and disease free. Sweet potatoes have a high nutritional value and should become one of the staples grown by all farming families even if it is only for home consumption. God has shown us the importance of diversity in his creation and we should be following closely what we see our Father doing in all areas of farming. It is however vitally important to consider the poor and take them on a journey of faithfulness with the small things before embarking on these slightly more advanced technologies. The first step is to encourage three-part rotational cropping and then build on that faithfulness to incorporate relays and thereafter green manure cover crops. <laughs>